Hey there and welcome back adventurers. In today's video we'll be talking about soloing static dungeons to earn millions of combat fame, fame credits, and faction points in a safe zone. I've done a video similar to this about half a year ago with the perfect build and there have been a lot of changes to items since then. I've seen some items like Hellion Jacket get nerfed so the goal for this video is to see if that build still holds up. I have also made changes to the cape I recommend and it really seems to help. If you haven't watched my previous video that isn't a problem as I will be breaking down the build for you. Not only will we go over which items to use, we will talk about which abilities I recommend and why. We will even go over a basic rotation that I recommend you master. I have received messages from a few of you that this isn't possible anymore or that it's too hard. I'm here to give you all the details that you need to succeed. Now before we jump into the build, let's talk about which static dungeons I farm, combat fame at, how we make faction points, and some requirements that might save you time and money. Now one last thing, make sure to join the community discord, you'll be the first to see any updates or new Albion Online content. I'm always giving away 30 days premium every two weeks. Both East and West servers are eligible, so make sure to enter. Now, without further ado, let's go. I prefer to farm at the Tier 4 Static Dungeon, which is two zones west of Thetford. The zone is called Fog Fen. You can easily look this up on the map and head on over. I like to farm at the Tier 4 Static Dungeons over Tier 5 Static Dungeons, since Tier 5 Static Dungeons tend to be overpopulated. It ends up being more efficient doing Tier 4 Statics. Now the reason that we go two zones out instead of just going to the one right next to Thetford is that you will gain a 5% bonus increase to combat fame and faction points. To earn faction points make sure to enlist in your city before heading out. As you kill the mobs you will also earn faction points allowing you to double dip on these kills. Now that you know which statics you will be farming at and how you will earn faction points let's talk about some requirements that will make this much easier for you and could save you some silver. I do recommend taking an item power of at least 1600. Now if you see that you are struggling and you haven't been able to perfect how to use the build then I recommend going higher into 1650 or 1700. I will say that I have been able to do this with 1600 so it is possible. I also advise that you take a mount that has a good amount of health but not too much since you will be rounding up the mobs and AOEing them down. Something like a bear might take too long for the mobs to kill your mount or something like a horse might die right away. I personally like using the Swamp Dragon since it doesn't slow down and it still has a good amount of health. Now let's talk about saving money. So the main hand that you'll be using is the Shadow Caller. As we all know, Shadow Callers can be very expensive. I recommend trying to get a good 6.2 or 6.3, even a 7.2 or 7.3. The reason for this is that you'll have enough item power even without investing millions of gold into an 8.3. Now if you have the silver, go for it and purchase the 8.3 or 8.4, it will make things much smoother. You can attempt to mix and match the build I will be going over to save as much silver as possible. Make sure to look on the market and attempt to get over that 1600 item power. Now that that's all squared up, let's go ahead and dive into the Shadow Caller build. So your main hand is the Shadow Caller. So for your first ability, you will go with Cursed Tar. Cursed Tar is great since you will place it on the ground and apply Vile Curses to multiple targets. You can place it multiple times since it has a small cooldown, ensuring that you have applied a Vile Curse to all your targets. The Vile Curse will be applied every second up to four times and do a large amount of damage. Now Cursed Tar will also slow your targets by 10%, giving you the wiggle room to kite around and survive. Cursed Heart does fall off after 8 seconds, so it is very important that you're refreshing them to maximize your damage output and to set up your other abilities. Now, your second ability will be Cursed Beam. You will concentrate a beam of energy at a target enemy dealing damage every half second while channeling for 3 seconds. Now, the reason that it is very important that you have placed a couple of Cursed Tar down is that you want to keep Vile Curse refreshing on the target since Curse Beam will consume one charge of Vile Curse every two ticks, meaning every second for three seconds, dealing massive AoE damage to all your targets. This is a great way to quickly kill your targets. Now, your third ability is very important and will save your life often. It is very important that you time this well to maximize your self-sustain and damage output. If used correctly, you'll be able to use it a couple of times per pull. Your third ability is Inner Shadow, which will deal damage to all enemies within a five meter radius of the position that you were standing. Since we will be wearing leather armor, it will deal damage every half second and steal 100% of the health that the enemy has lost. So the cool thing about large pulls is that you'll be life stealing off the mobs that you have killed. If you find yourself with a low amount of HP, make sure to use this and it will heal you to full. So for your passive, you will go with Furious, which will increase your damage by 10% for 4 seconds after casting 5 spells. Since you will be using your spells on cooldown, you will always have the 10% damage increase. So let's talk about the next item here. For your helmet, you will take the Spectre Hood. 
you will take a flash of insight which will reset your cooldown for your armor ability this does have half a second cast so make sure that you aren't able to get interrupted if you do get interrupted it will drop the cooldown to half instead for your passive it will be balanced mind for the increased damage and healing now the reason that you're going with the specter hood is to increase your sustain from your armor item which is the hellion jacket now the hellion jacket has been nerfed by 50 percent and was a huge cause for concern when it comes to this build as soloing statics or group dungeons however after testing this out the amount of damage and sustain that you gain from the build it isn't impacted as much and it is still very viable what makes your hellion jacket so good is your r lifesteal aura this is huge as it allows you to heal off packs of mobs the lower your health when you first use lifesteal aura the more it heals you which makes it a great way to fully top yourself off make sure to hold on to it as long as you can and only use it when you're getting ready to die the last thing you want to do is find yourself on cooldown when you really need it. For your offhand, you will take Muisak for the increased damage and healing. Muisak is perfect for this build because you gain so much from the additional damage that turns into lifesteal, and then you also gain from the additional healing that the Muisak provides. Your boots will be the Guardian Boots, so make sure to take Giant for your F. This will increase your current and max health by 100%. I use Giant to set up mobs or buy myself some time for large ability cooldowns. I tend to use giant early so if I have a larger pack that is taking some time to die I'm able to get a second cooldown in. Now where I have made a change to the build is when it comes to your cape. I used to recommend the Limhurst cape for the additional energy regen however I found that the keeper's cape really gives you a damage boost which once again will boost your sustain. Keeper's cape's passive berserk will activate when you drop below 70% health your damage will be increased by 50% for 6 seconds. I highly recommend using your damaging cooldowns when you see this proc to quickly burst the large packs of mobs down. Now for your consumables I recommend taking poison potions. There will be times where you pick up archers which will walk away from the group and make it hard to AOE them down. Once you finish the group of mobs turn to the single target that is left and use your poisons to help you kill these targets. Your sustain will drop drastically when fighting a single target. For your food buff make sure to take roast pork for the life steal. You will steal 9.45% of your enemy's health that they receive as damage. This is very important to have on every single pool since you'll need the sustain that you can get. Now that we know which items and abilities you will need, let's talk about a basic rotation to help you survive these pulls and maximize the amount of combat fame you will make per hour. I always recommend starting on your mount and rounding as many melee mobs as you can. If you do have ranged mobs, be very careful with the archers as they hit the hardest and will not stand with the rest of the mobs. Once your mount is killed, start by throwing two cursed tars down onto the ground. I personally like to use giant to increase my maximum health and to start my AoE damage with cursed beam. Once your giant falls off, make sure to reapply cursed tar onto the ground. If your cursed beam is on cooldown and you see that you're taking damage, use inner shadow on top of all the mobs. This will shoot your damage up and heal you up quickly. You will then rinse and repeat with cursed tar and cursed beam. If you find yourself dropping extremely low, then use your hellion jacket's lifesteal aura to heal yourself as your other cooldowns come up. I recommend using Spectre's Hood's Flash of Light right after using the Hellion Jacket to have that additional life to aura available and to start the cooldown for your Flash of Light. Alright, so there you have it. I am more than confident that you'll be able to solo some static dungeons and farm a large amount of fame and combat fame. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Albin Online content. As always, stay epic, stay legendary, and I'll see you in the next video.